A relatively slow week at the Capitol saw measures moving through the House and Senate committees dealing with a variety of topics from arming school teachers to transporting sludge. Dick Pryor spoke with Sean Ashley about these bills and other things that went on this week at the Capitol. Sean, tax cut measures were moving targets this week at the legislature. That's exactly right. It was an interesting week as far as taxes were concerned. On Monday, the Senate's proposal to reduce the individual income tax rate from five and a quarter percent down to 4.75 and limit some tax credits, deductions, and exemptions failed in a House Appropriations and Budget Subcommittee. Then on Tuesday, the Senate Finance Committee was supposed to take up the House proposal that would reduce the individual income tax from that 5.25% down to 5%. Well, instead, the chairman of uh, that committee, Senator uh, Mike Macy from Tulsa, decided to lay over that bill and not hear it. What he said later in the day was that really the Republican caucus needed to talk about that bill a bit more and see what they wanted to do. Well, they did that on Wednesday, uh, meeting for an hour and a half behind closed doors and then late Wednesday evening, uh, we learned that the Senate Finance Committee would hold a special meeting on Thursday to consider the House bill. But the bill we got Thursday was not the House bill. Instead, what we have is a bill that decreases the individual income tax down to 4.95%, and it takes five transferable tax credits and eliminates their transferability and makes them simply refundable tax credits. And the other element of this tax cut proposal that's different than what the House had put forth is that it doesn't take effect until January 1st, 2015. Now that's good for this year's budget riders because there's no impact in the next budget year, fiscal year 2014. Uh, but as the House Speaker pointed out uh, later on Thursday, that's not what the taxpayers of, of Oklahoma probably want. It's not what House leaders want. So even though we reached an agreement in terms of producing a bill, we don't have an agreement on a plan. Uh, the Senate President Pro Tem admits this is a work in progress, so I don't think this is the last time we'll be talking about taxes. We saw a new version of the Senate Workers' Comp Bill, compliments of the House of Representatives. That's exactly right. It's sort of the same situation all over again, this time in the House. Uh, as you and your viewers will recall, back uh, several weeks ago, the Senate passed a bill that would create an administrative workers' comp system. And a number of people had some criticisms of that, including some supporters of the idea. As this bill was waiting to be heard by the House Ju Judiciary Committee, a number of suggestions have been made to improve it. Uh, House Speaker T.W. Shannon said what they did was to take a good bill and make it better. What we saw on Thursday was a bill that was 240 pages or so long, suddenly have 60 more pages added to it, so it's now more than a 300-page bill. Uh, we really haven't had time to go through all the ins and outs of the bill to see how it's changed. Uh, but those who are supporting it, like T.W. Shannon, say it was a good bill that's been made better. We'll see Tuesday uh, when that bill comes up in the House Judiciary Committee. Bills dealing with school security passed. That's exactly right. Uh, the Oklahoma School Security Commission held a number of meetings earlier this year uh, after the incident in Newton, Connecticut, in Newtown, Connecticut, excuse me, and looked at a variety of ways in which Oklahoma schools could be made safer. A series of bills have been proposed as a result of that, and they pa passed a House committee this week. One of those would create an institute at the Oklahoma Department of Homeland Security to help schools become more secure. Another one of those bills would also uh, recommend that schools hold security drills at specific times during the year and a specific number to make sure every student is properly drilled and practices what to do in case of an emergency. Two bills dealing with firearms in schools, however, failed. That's exactly right. Representative Mark McCullough's proposal to allow some teachers to be armed after receiving a certain amount of training uh, was not heard in the Senate. Also a proposal that would have allowed um, uh, private schools to make, set their own rules regarding handguns on their campuses was not heard. Uh, private schools are treated kind of uniquely in Oklahoma law. Although they're private institutions, there are some guidelines in Oklahoma law that they have to follow, such as whether or not uh, they can or cannot have guns on their campuses, and currently they cannot. Planning a crime of mass violence. There's a bill pertaining to that, and it is moving along. Yes, and, and it's a rather interesting uh, piece of legislation. Uh, first of all, what it's designed to do is uh, deal with those individuals, or groups of individuals for that matter, who plan something like a, a Newtown or an Aurora, Colorado attack. 
But at the same time, there's a whistleblower provision in this bill that if an individual is part of that planning or knows about that one of these crimes is, is uh, someone is planning uh, to commit one of these crimes and they go to law enforcement authorities and report that, they are not subject to the law. Instead, they have prevented something from happening and they will not be prosecuted. An interesting bill came up regarding sludge from out of state. Tell us about that. That's exactly right. And, and, and this is one of those things you, you really don't think about. But apparently they're dredging the Hudson River in New York. That sludge is being loaded on trains and shipped to Enid, Oklahoma, where it's offloaded on the trucks and taken to a hazardous landfill there. Now, this sludge is not hazardous. The problem is there's not a provision in Oklahoma law for the landfill uh, to charge in, uh, a fee for that sludge. So what this bill simply does is permit hazardous landfills to charge a fee for non-hazardous material, which they accept. Good to know. Yes, it is. Sean Ashley from ECapital, thank you. You're very welcome.